Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today I want to answer a very simple question. Just who are mobile NAS devices like these actually for? What good are they? Are they just NAS devices being repackaged and charged extra for? Or do they have a purpose? Well, in this video I want to talk about exactly who a device like this is aimed at. But before we get lost in any terminology or jargon, what exactly is a mobile NAS? Is it just a hard drive I can connect to wirelessly? No, it is so much more than that. A mobile NAS gives you the full user interface control features and services of a desktop NAS that you normally attach to your mains power and your local area network, but it does it on battery power. This one, for example, is the Unified Drive. This has got two M.2 NVMe slots inside. It was always powered by an ARM CPU with, I believe, four gig of DDR4 memory inside. It also has a physical ethernet port there. It has USB Type-C power, a two hour battery life with access, cooling systems internally, dual SD card slots there, further USB connections, a one-touch copy button, and a one-touch Wi-Fi button. That is not just a hard drive with Wi-Fi. Another one is this, the Pocket NAS, or the Station PC, arriving with an M.2 NVMe slot inside and a docking station. This similarly has the same level of access and control with SD cards and USB ports, but it also has a graphical user interface with which you can navigate, and it has the same level of hardware. A similar CPU and that separate docking station having its own storage capabilities and network connection. These are not just hard drives with Wi-Fi connectivity. They do have Wi-Fi connectivity, more on that later on, but ultimately that is what a mobile NAS is. Now, why is this appealing? Well, what exactly does a mobile NAS give you that your existing desktop NAS doesn't give you, and moreover, a simple USB key doesn't give you? Well, it's about efficiency and it's about time. Case in point, let's say this recording. This recording is part one of three that I'm gonna be recording today. It's been going on now with a little bit of retake at the beginning for around about seven minutes. Now, this recording here, when I'm going to travel to my next location, anything could happen in that meantime. It could be corrupted, the camera could break, or water damage, one of a million things could happen. So it's important to me to make a backup of this. Now, that's not unusual. Now, in the normal backup side of things, when this recording finishes, I would pull out my SD card from the back of this camera, and perhaps I would connect it to a docking station connecting it to my laptop. Perhaps I'm going to connect it to an, a drive with an SD card slot. Perhaps I could do that. But ultimately, whichever way I go about it, it needs power and I'm going to have to manually synchronize with the device either with a mobile application or I'm going to have to do it on a desktop client or laptop and then sit here stationary getting the job done. What sets a mobile NAS apart from that is this. I take my SD card slot, I mean my SD card, I get my mobile NAS, I put my SD card inside, and then I click the one touch copy button. And now it's gonna back up. It's gonna back up onto that NAS and it's doing it automatically. And it's doing it with RAID fail over there in the background, not a backup, but a safety net. Now I've done this, what next? So what exactly are the performance benefits of backing up onto that local mobile NAS when comparing it against backing up to a NAS or a cloud device? Let's face it, a mobile NAS is ultimately just a NAS running on a battery. So why on earth would a mobile NAS give you any kind of intrinsic benefits you don't already have? Well, probably the biggest benefit that I'm sure a number of you have already noticed is right now while I'm riding this bike, my NAS is backing up the contents of that SD card. Now, that means that rather than having to sit put in, say, a remote office, or even in my standard office, backing up onto the NAS over the local area network, this device allows me to back up that SD card out of my DJI 
and then immediately start doing other things while it backs up in my rucksack. Add to that the fact that that device also allows RAID functionality internally to give me a safety net, not a backup, key important difference. And if I do synchronize it with an internet connection, like a cellular one provided by my mobile phone or perhaps a USB dongle, that allows me to create another tiered backup to a cloud service or perhaps even a remotely connected NAS via remote relay services, utilizing WebDAV, or even if I'm in close enough proximity when I get back, automatically synchronizing over SMB or Samba. Equally, perhaps I've already taken shots from multiple cameras, some of which support Wi-Fi. Now, let's say the mobile phone in my pocket, or perhaps another camera that I used for B-roll. These can not only be connected via that USB port that is available on the majority of mobile NAS devices, but on top of that, they can also connect via Wi-Fi. Now I know some of you are gonna be want to say that me having a Wi-Fi connection, why didn't I just use Google Drive and the internet? No, well, the reason I bring it up is because if I was to connect to Google Drive remotely, whether I'm using 4G or 5G outdoors or an internet connection, backing up onto Google Drive is significantly slower than most local network speeds. When you're connecting to remote access NAS, it can make all the difference the upload speed offered by your internet service provider. And very few ISPs, be they, you know, standard ADSL and broadband or remote access cellular services are going to support those kind of speeds for upload. Now, the reason I bring it up is because if I'm synchronizing cameras over Wi-Fi 6 right now, and that is my mobile phone, my B-roll camera. Those are happening wirelessly in my bag as well. They are connected via Wi-Fi 6, which on a single five gigahertz band can achieve um, an impressive uh, 1.2 gigabits per second, which in turn means that it's actually faster in close proximity, like in my rucksack, to back that up than it would be to back up on a one gigabit Ethernet network connection or the remote access services of my phone's cellular provider. That means that at that speed, in the next 10 to 15 minutes of cycling, I can not only back up a few hundred megabytes up to gigabytes on an SD card onto that NAS while I'm on the go, but also it allows me to back up multiple cameras via Wi-Fi 6 all onto that NAS in my rucksack. And then from there, it can synchronize with remote cloud services with an internet connection. And all of this is happening right now. And it's happening when I'm just cycling on the road rather than being stuck at my desk, not being able to do anything, watching a transfer bar complete. Ultimately, mobile NAS devices are predominantly about efficiency and saving time. They're not designed to replace a network attached storage device. They are designed to allow you to add a much more efficient bubble to your existing workflow when you are out and about, be it international or national like this. So there you go. In that time that I've been doing my riding there, not only have I had a lovely bit of cardiovascular, but at the same time, that data from the camera recording would have been backed up onto this mobile NAS. Now, depending on the size of the file and the length of the journey, that could have made all the difference. But still, that's the main difference from mobile NAS devices to the kind of sedentary NAS devices that most of us use. But I guess a lot of you are wondering, does this actually replace a standard NAS? Well, simply the answer is no. You're not able to replace your normal desktop NAS or something like this. This is designed for portability. You could synchronize it, as mentioned earlier, with an existing network attached storage device you may have around. Moreover, 
This is designed about making the most of those journeys, those distances but from job to job, from shoot to shoot, where you don't want to waste time standing around. And in that arena, this is perfect. Now, again, not all mobile NAS devices are built equally. This one, for example, is probably one of the best examples I've seen on the market, notwithstanding it having flash storage and having 2.5 gigabit ethernet there on the base is probably one of the more capable options in the market. But depending on your budget and your needs, you can scale up and down accordingly. But much like the movie Gremlins, you've got to remember the rules. This is designed for portability. You can run it off a USB long term, but in that scenario, I would use a desktop NAS. If you're going to use something like this, having it sitting on a desktop, gradually wearing that battery away is not going to be suitable whatsoever. Likewise, although you can run things like Plex, MB, Jellyfin and more via a containerized application on a device like this, keep in mind that in the long term, it's not going to be as good as setting up a Plex Media server on a standalone NAS solution and accessing that remotely. This is at its best when it's being utilized with an existing network attached storage device that you can create another Another part of your 321 backup strategy involving one of these when you're on the go. Now, if you're watching this and wondering, this seems like overkill, why on earth would you need to get something to cover those small shortfalls between a recording like this one and when I can sit stationary at a laptop in a coffee shop or more? If you are someone asking that question, this product isn't designed for you. Mobile NAS devices are designed for people that are worried about those small, small percentage chance losses that can happen on the go, alongside those that want to maximize time efficiency. And for those users, mobile NAS devices are answering a call. There is a reason why devices like these have raised millions in crowdfunding. Remember that, crowdfunding, because they needed to see if things like this would be popular. And the numbers seem to bear fruit. So if you're considering your workflow, considering your off-site backups, but your on-the-go backups, take a moment and look into mobile NAS devices like this. Now, I've linked to a few in the description below. Again, they've not sponsored this video, Duots and their bike have sponsored this one today, but I do recommend checking out the reviews of some of these devices, because I think you'll be really surprised how far this kind of technology has come in terms of power. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.